Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. It's me and Quincy here. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Brie. I'm a full-time artist. This vlog is gonna cover some of the work that went into vending at Fanex this year. It's a comic con and like anime convention in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's a really, really big convention. There were like 900 different artists and vendors and it was a really fun time. I've gotta go feed him dinner, otherwise he's gonna freak out. So overall, Fanex was a really good experience for me. It was my first like official convention that I've sold at. So the main products that I showed up with were my rugs. I did a few different ones from different animes. I did some Zelda and like Animal Crossing ones as well. So anything left over from the con is up on my website. Although I still have some rugs left over and I was hoping to sell a little bit more of them, I am really proud because the two biggest, most expensive rugs that I brought sold. So I'm so, so thankful about that. You guys might remember my Kiki's Livery Service rug, like the big one. That one sold, some really sweet woman bought it for me. And then I also sold the fifth gear Luffy rug that I made from One Piece. So the Kiki rug I sold for like 400 and the fifth gear one was like 250. So even with just those two, I was like feeling pretty good. And I ended up selling like a bunch of other stuff too. So if you're curious about like what exactly I sold and what I didn't and how much money I made, that's gonna be at the end of the video. So Fanex was September 21st through the 23rd. The whole month leading up to Fanex, I was working on just like stocking up inventory and like figuring out what I wanted my booth to look like. So I was working at least six days a week for the month and most days I was working like 10 hour days, sometimes like 12. So for the amount I worked, I was hoping for like a little bit more money. But the thing is I still have all this stuff as inventory. So it's not all for naught. Now I just have to sell it online. All right, that's it for the intro. I'm just gonna let the video play on and you can kind of see all the chaos that went into um, like setting up my booth and everything. All right, hi YouTube. It's the Friday before Fanex, so I'm just gonna set up my mock table display right now. Just 
one more please be done. The moment I have the idea for it, basically. I, I do not want to ask if it's too much here. I'm now left, Matt. I've got two big circles and I think now I zigzag stitch around the edges. can't see. <laughs> Alright, I have loaded everything into my van. I've got all my rugs, a bunch of extra stuff, all of my earrings are in boxes back here. Hi guys, so I know I said that I was going to show you all the rugs before Fanex, but I kind of ran out of time. So I'm just going to show you the rugs that I have left over and I'll talk about which ones I sold as well. Straw Hat Jolly Roger.
Pochita. He's so cute. This Chromie is adorable as well, I know. Two Inoskes. I really thought at least one of these would sell, but they didn't, so now I have two of them. If you want a Inoske, they'll be on my website. Look at how cute he is. I'm quite proud of this Luffy and Ace one. In the weeks leading up to Fanex, I was like trying to watch some convention like Artist Alley videos just to kind of see what I could expect as far as for sales. Honestly, I didn't really find any videos that like explicitly said how much money they were making. And I was unsure if I should tell you guys, but since I couldn't find that information, I thought it might be helpful to you because that's what I was looking for. So in total for the three days I made, $1,809. And I'll go through each day what I made. Okay, so on Thursday, it was the first day of the con, and at the end of the day, I was so terrified because I only made $139. And I was like, oh my God, if this keeps up, like I'm not even get, gonna get my booth fee back. Like, holy shit. But it did pick up. So on Friday, I made $934. And then Saturday, I made $736. I will tell you guys what the booth fee was. All right, so I originally paid to be a part of the vendor alley because the artist alley sold out, but I still wanted to be a part of Fanex, so I paid almost double the price of the artist alley booth fee to be put in the vendor hall instead. With my application, I did say that if there's room, I would love to be switched over to artist alley instead. So that did happen. I didn't know until I showed up and like picked up my badges, but they were like, here's your two badges. And I was like, wait, I'm supposed to have four because I paid for the vendor. They informed me that they had room. So they moved me over to the artist alley and they were going to be refunding me the difference. Now it's like October 5th and I haven't been refunded yet, but I did email them today just to see like what the deal is with that. That'll be nice. Cause I think the artist alley was around 250 and for the vendor haul, I paid 550. So that should be like a nice two to $300 back in my bank account, which I really appreciate. So I did break it down by payment method. Cause I thought that this would be interesting. So $1,055 were processed through Square. So basically like credit cards or debit cards. That was definitely um, what most people wanted to do. I did say that you could pay with them or cash as well, but most people just wanted to pay with Square. And $586. I got from Venmo. And then cash, it was just 168. So like I said, I made $1,809. I truthfully was hoping for like three grand in sales. So overall, I was like a little bit disappointed, but I did well enough that I wasn't like sad about it. You know what I mean? It's just kind of weird. Cause like one time I sold at an event just for one evening. It was a private event at my climbing gym and it was just for like climbing professionals, like people in the wall building industry and stuff like that. And at that one event, I made like $1,200. So in comparison that, which was free for me to vend at, and it was one evening versus like a three day con, which was like so much to think about and prepare for. Um, the money difference is kind of interesting there. Granted the one, the climbing gym market, that was like the best one I've ever done. But yeah, overall, I'm still like happy. That brings me down to like, let's just say like 1500 when I take away the booth fee. And that's how much money I need to like pay my bills for the month. So overall, I'd say I did okay. I think my issue a little bit was that some of my people walked by and were like really interested in my rugs, but I think they saw like, they'd walk by and see like a couple of the price tags and assume that they were like out of their budget, even though I had rugs of like every budget variety. Like I had stuff all the way from $20 to 400. And then I also had like stickers and prints and my manga earrings. I almost didn't bring my prints because they're like not related to any fan art or anything. They're just like nature-y. 
and they actually sold pretty well. So very glad that I brought those. I was just selling my little like five by seven mini prints and I just sold them for like $5 each, just like really affordable and a bunch sold. So really happy about that. I also made a point to encourage people to follow me on Instagram because I thought at the very least, even if I don't do great in sales, I'll at least have some new Instagram followers and like people who are genuinely interested in my stuff. I didn't keep exact count, but I got almost a hundred new followers on Instagram. And those are all like genuine connections I made with people where they wanted to follow me. So I'm pretty happy about that. Even though I don't have a huge social media following, I feel like my business has worked because I tend to get people to follow me in real life, like at events and stuff. So it's like people who I've met who are genuinely interested in what I'm selling. Um, they have like a personal connection because we've actually met. Uh, and I think that's helped a lot actually. Like I only have like 2,500 followers on Instagram. And when I started being full time with my art, I only had like a thousand. It like really wasn't that much. But just based on like the good follower connections and just selling at events all the time, um, I think people just kind of got to know me. At FanX, I actually had some people come up to me and be like, oh, I've seen you selling at like the flea market uh, earlier this year. Like I always see your booth and love it. So that was really nice. Hi, Quincy. Yeah, I don't know. So I'm honestly happy with 100 followers. As far as FanX as an event, like the organizing and everything, like I said, it's my first con, my first real one, um, but I think they did like really well with the organization. I didn't really have like any issues at all. It took me a second to figure out where to like pick up my badges and check in when I first got there, but that was really just because of how big the convention was. And if I was less shy, I could have like talked to a few employees and found it. I did ask one person, they like pointed me in the direction and I could not find it. So then I like went and found my booth, set up a little bit and then went back to actually sign in. And I talked to a vendor and they were like, no, you gotta go, you gotta go this way. So they helped me out. If you're an artist who is interested in selling at markets, I really think that you should try it out. It's really weird how like validating it is because even if you don't make a lot of sales, people are so sweet. Like people would come by and be like, I love your stuff, you're so talented, you're amazing, oh my god. And I would just be like sitting there blushing, like what the hell? People were really, really nice. So you can see from my little image where I crossed out all the rugs that I sold a decent amount of them. And there was actually some on like the sides of the panels that I sold as well that you couldn't see in the photo. So overall, I didn't have like a bunch of rugs to bring home. So that felt pretty good. Oh, another thing. So I talked to a few of the other artists who had sold at Fanex before. I talked to like a few of them who have sold the last couple years and they said that 2021 after the pandemic was pretty good. Like attendance was pretty good. People were excited, but also like COVID was still going around. So not everyone showed up. And then 2022 apparently was like amazing because people were just like psyched to be out and doing things, which I totally understand. I feel like in 2022, I had a really easy time selling my art compared to this year. And then at the end of the con, they said that this year, between like the three people that I talked to, they all said that this year was like the slowest since 2021, as far as sales go. Overall, it was still like a really fun con. I think that people are just feeling a little bit strapped for money right now. Understandably, everything's so expensive. So buying like silly little things at a convention, is just like not as necessary, which I totally understand. It does leave me in kind of a tough place though, because I feel like making sales last year on my website and in person was so much easier. And even though my skills have improved so much and like my booth looks way better and everything, I'm like struggling to make the money that I need to. So I feel like October is me kind of like reevaluating my business. I'm honestly not exactly sure where I want my business to go. I want it to be slightly less reliant on my rugs, even though that is like the big money maker for me. As far as just like physical labor, it's, it's a lot and I'm definitely not charging as much as I should be for the rugs for how much time I'm putting into them. I'm basically charging them at a rate that I know people will purchase them eventually, uh, even though I should be charging like 50 to $100 more per rug probably. So in October, I'm really just trying to like 
do some soul searching for my business because I really don't know what to do. Like this summer I haven't really made the money I need to to continue doing this full time. I'm just kind of scheming up some ideas, you know? And I'm also just trying to like draw in my sketchbook every day because I do want my business to go more towards like prints and stickers and like stuff that I can get manufactured. Like I'd love to make a tote bag and notepads and stuff like that, but you kind of need money and the right audience to be able to sell that stuff in the first place. So I'm just kind of like figuring it out. Um, I'm probably gonna like buy some tote bags and just do some painting on them before I get any manufactured. I might work on like selling some original paintings or something just as like motivation for me to keep practicing towards like my illustration goals. I'm also thinking about applying to some artist residencies, ones that would like pay you a stipend for being there. I don't know, there's a lot of options. If there's anything that you think would be interesting for me to sell, let me know in the comments. If there's anything that you really like buying from artists, let me know in the comments. I buy notepads personally because they're like so functional. I use notepads constantly and when they're cute, makes me happy. In the past, I've really been inspired by um, Studio Maggie's notepads. I'm also thinking about doing some live streaming on Twitch of my art stuff, mainly for fun, but also it's just like another way to bring some more audience to my other social media and just like build familiarity with me as a person. I feel like live streaming is a really easy way to get to know someone. I've done one stream on Twitch so far and it was really fun. I just did like a little crochet stream on this sweater that I'm working on. Uh, that's it for now. I've already started recording another vlog of like what I'm actually doing in my studio day to day now that Fanix is over. I think it's really funny that when I started my YouTube, I like could not talk to the camera whatsoever. Like I was so uncomfortable. It would take me a million takes just to be able to like say a sentence, but now I'm just blabbering. Like and nowadays I just chat and chat and chat with the camera and then I have to cut out like half of it because it's just so long. Yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate you being here. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, leave a comment, you know, check out my website, whatever.